NanoCAD has the ability to draw a variety of arrays. These are entities that are copied in multiple directions. It does rectangular arrays, polar arrays, and even three-dimensional arrays. NanoCAD 21 now does interactive arrays that are associative. They allow you to edit the array while you're constructing it, and even afterwards. Previously, you could create arrays only through the use of dialog boxes or at the command line. There was a dialog box for rectangular arrays, another one for polar arrays, and a third one for creating three-dimensional arrays. To draw an array, go to the Draw tab, and then in the Modify panel, find the Array drop-down. Have the buttons for drawing rectangular, polar, and 3D arrays. In previous releases of NanoCAD, these executed the array command with the dialog box. But now in NanoCAD 21, they execute the interactive command. Click on the Rectangular Array button, and then choose one or more objects to array. When done selecting, press Enter. Notice that NanoCAD immediately shows you a preview of the default parameters, in terms of spacing and number of rows and columns. Once the initial array is created by NanoCAD, there's usually two things you want to change right away. One is the count, that's the number of rows and columns. Click on the count options and then enter the number of columns. I'm going to change this to 6 and the number of rows to 2. The other thing you'll want to change is the spacing between items. So you can specify the distance between columns. I'll change that to 100. And the distance between rows. I'll change that to 50. And then choose Exit to end the command. When you now select the array, notice that there's a number of smart grips involved. Let's take a look at what they are. The one in the lower left corner moves the array. The second option is called Level Count that lets you create a 3D array by specifying the number of levels by changing the level to 3. And now we, when we go into a 3D mode, you can see the, the triple levels. This arrow specifies the distance between columns. Click on it and then when you move it back and forth, the array widens or narrows. As well, you can enter in a value by typing it at the keyboard. The distant arrow specifies the number of columns at that given distance. Click it, and as you drag it, you see the number of columns increase and decrease. This smart grip also lets you change the total column spacing, that's the overall distance of the columns, and the axis angle. Choose it, and then enter in something like 15 degrees. Let's return the array to its original configuration and look at the grips that affect rows. This grip lets you specify the spacing between rows and absolute numbers, so I can change that to 100. The other row grip lets you change the row count, so I'm going to grab it and increase it to have more rows. And then as well there's total row spacing, which means if you want all the rows to fit into a specific space, you can specify that. And again, do the axis angle as we showed earlier with columns. Finally, this grip handles row and column count and spacing all at the same time. So I can click it, change them interactively by moving the cursor or entering values. Creating polar arrays is similar but with far more options. Click on the Polar Array button and then specify the center point. This is where the elements of the array will be rotated about. So I will click just over here. By default, NanoCAD initially draws six elements. If you want to change the number, click Items, and then enter in a different number, such as seven. You can have multiple polar arrays by choosing the Rows option. Click Rows, and then I'll enter in two. NanoCAD adds a second array. You can specify the distance between the rows, that's between the initial one and the, the new one, and let me reduce that to 100. The two rows can be at different elevations. And I'll enter in a value of 100 and then look at it from 3D. The outer row is at a higher elevation. You don't specify a distance between elements but an angle between them. So I'm going to change the angle between them down to 45 degrees. This squeezes the elements together and creates a gap in it. 
can also specify a fill angle, and if I type in 360, this forces the elements to be spread apart again. The other important option is whether you want the elements rotated. Right now they are rotated because they always face the base point. Let me change the value to no. The elements all face in the same direction. When you're done editing, press enter. The undo command works well with interactive arrays. I'm going to enter in U. You can see it jumps back to its original lonely element.